Hello. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. Um, today's question is, what is your favorite idiom in English? So what we would like you to do is to introduce yourself, your name, perhaps where you're from, so which region or city or even country, um, because I know that we have some Spanish and French viewers as well. Hmm. And yeah, what is your favorite idiom? In the meantime, I think let's introduce ourselves. You have the opportunity to go first. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I'm Jenna, Ooh, as you can see. Um, I'm originally from the Bahamas. Um, I've been living in Europe for the past 10 years now, uh, more than that, 10 years now. Um, and yeah, I live in Bologna. Um, we teach together, Joanna and I, and I've lived here for about four years. <laughs> awesome, 10 years because you lived in the UK first. How long did you live there for? Um, three years for university. Okay, that's a long time though. That means it's seven other years that you were in different places? Yeah, <laughs> I left. So um, after university, I lived in uh, Spain for a year, and then I came to Treviso in Bologna. Sorry, first I came to Treviso, then I came to Bologna for a few years, um, went to Gran Canaria, and then came back last year, May. And you were all over the place traveling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there was another year. Um, so my university course was four years. In my third year, I spent half half the time in uh, Madrid and half the time in Paris. Oh, for so, your for your degree. Degree. Oh yes, because you were studying Spanish and French. Right. Yeah. Wow, you've done a lot of traveling in this yeah. time. I Me think too. I'm gonna stay here now. <laughs> I'm gonna stay okay. Here. Understood. Understood. Yeah, well, it's a good place to be. <laughs> um, I am Joanna. I haven't traveled that much. Um, I am from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I also live in Bologna, not in the center, though. I live in the countryside. I have been in Bologna for two, almost two and a half years now. Um, and I've been teaching at my English school for one year now. So like Jenna said, both of us are teachers. She's my colleague um, at Bologna Mille. And what else? I don't think I've traveled really. I lived in Germany for a yeah, year. Oh, some... I've been in Europe now for four years, which I never ever thought that I would actually live in Europe. Uh, even though I have European parents, I never thought that I'd be here. I lived in Germany for one year and I lived in Sassuolo for one year as well, uh, which is a smaller town closer towards Modena. And yeah, that's me. So yes, let us know guys, what is your favorite idiom in English? Where are you from and what idiom do you like? Yeah. Jenna, do you have a specific idiom? That favorite you idiom? Ooh. I have a I have a, an idiom that I don't like. Oh wow, tell me. I don't like the idiom to hit two birds with one stone. Because it sounds like animal abuse. It is. Why <laughs> why is that expression persisted through the years? I don't know. I don't know why that expression still exists. Come on. So I don't know about a hit, but I know a little bit more aggressive to kill. Mm. To kill two birds with... Oh, sorry. You're right. To kill. It's okay. Yeah, you I could say it as well. I the expression so much, I can't even remember it exactly. <laughs> to kill two birds with one stone. Do you want to tell them perhaps what it means? Yeah. So to kill two birds with one stone means to do something, um, which means that you can accomplish another thing at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah, so accomplish two things at the same time. I don't know if I have an idiom that I don't like. Uh, sometimes with the idioms, I'm like, this makes absolutely no sense. No Why would I even exist? Maybe um, the one with 
Okay, go ahead. I'll let you no, think. No, no problem. Tell me which one. Um, another one that I I have always found very strange. Um, to have your cake and eat it too. You can't have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> do you want to do you want to explain to them what that one means? To have your cake and eat it too. So it's it means that you can't you can't have everything. Um, you have to make decisions. Um, yeah, you have I, to make choices. <laughs> but I think that I have one that I don't like is probably to be one foot in the grave. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> to be one foot in the grave. Um, I probably don't like it for the same reason that you don't like to kill birds with one stone um not because it's animal abuse but because mm -hmm. it's abuse in general no, it's not yeah um, to be one foot in the grave it means how i understand it it is to be in a very difficult situation because you've put yourself in that situation not because someone else did mm. and you sort of lie to get yourself out of that situation and you may you can't turn back now you may as well just go go with all of your lies and end up there um i don't know if that's so clear yeah uh, it is. <laughs> it's like what what did, what did, it says there was another one something about to lay in bed or to make your bed or something oh you oh. made your bed now lay in it right it's some of it it's like i don't understand so mm -mm -mm. yeah so to be one foot in the grave uh to be in a situation that you put yourself in mm. we have a viewer would you like to read <laughs> hi teachers Hi, Andrea, I recognize you. Yes, I'm, so do I. Yeah. Um, I'm from Bologna and my favorite idiom in English is, it's oh, me too, it's five o'clock somewhere. You know that idiom, Joanna. Um, sure. it, is that what they use when they say it's okay to drink, to start drinking? Yeah, five o'clock <laughs> somewhere. So. I, I never used that one. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, it does make sense. Um, so, for everyone who's watching, when someone says, and thank you, Andrea, for that one, it's five o'clock somewhere, um, they usually use it as a reason to start drinking alcohol early. So, let's say it's nine o'clock in the morning here and you've decided to start drinking, and someone asks, Why are you drinking so early? and you're like, Well, it's five o'clock somewhere which means the timing is appropriate i've i've never used that i don't think i'm, I'm no. a massive drinker but now right. it gives me more reason to use it to use it yeah if anyone yeah. else yeah it's pure logic, logic that one pure logic <laughs> it's good reason to use it um is there any more idioms can you guys think of any more idioms that you perhaps like or maybe idioms that maybe you don't understand. Typical hmm. normal idioms that we get. So I'm trying to think. I want to Google it now. Hmm. <laughs> Just in case. Hmm. There's there's so another. There's why are there so many idioms? Yeah. Mm, they've been around a long time. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, oh, maybe I don't like, oh, I like, this one is typically used to speak of the devil. Hmm. Um, I'm going to teach them that one, to speak of the devil. That is not talking literally about the devil. It's if you're in a situation and you were talking about someone and that person appears while or you're, that person enters the building or the conversation while you're actually speaking about them, you would say, to speak of the devil. Mm. Speak of the devil, James has arrived, for example. Yeah. Yeah. 
Andrea says, we are on the same page as an idiom. Um, yes, it is, actually. Um, to be, to have the same understanding of something or to, mm. to follow, like you're, you're on par. So what I say, you understand or you agree with, uh, usually. Funny enough, Andrea, I say that one all the time in the classroom. Are we on the same page? And people don't understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and I'm like, are you following me? And they're mm -hmm. like, no, we're not following you. We're sitting here. And I'm like, no, are you, <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. to, to explain that one. Um, can you think of another before we start or should we get started? Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> We've got plenty. Yes, we do. So, our wonderful focus activity. Food for thought. Mm, that's another idiom. <laughs> it is. Food for thought. You want to explain that one? Yeah. So, if you say that something is food for thought, um, you're saying that something that someone has said is something to... Con um, to, to think about, to consider thinking mm. about. There's um, something someone said. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, would you like to read? Mm -hmm. So, in this focus activity, learning common food idioms, guessing the meaning of expressions, and practicing new expressions. Mm. Excellent. What's your favorite recipe? So in the comment section below, guys, maybe you want to tell us what's your favorite recipe? Jenna, do you have a favorite recipe? Um, mm, that's a good question. Um, well, you're baking a lot, so it could be a baking I recipe. Am. <laughs> um, I like, okay, for baking, I like making cheesecakes. Um, recently, you need to a good recipe for that. Yeah, recently I made um, a brownie cheesecake. So a brownie is the base, is the bottom, and on top, um, you add a little bit of a cheesecake mixture and swirl it in with like a toothpick, and it makes a pretty design on top. <laughs> I am mind blown right now. Please. <laughs> Send me the recipe on WhatsApp. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I love baking too. I really, really like making chocolate cake. Um, mm. This word might gross people out, but I really like moist chocolate cake. Doesn't I don't mind that word. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that word because I, I immediately think of cake personally. And so do and I. I. I'm not grossed out by it either moist and moist is an adjective that we would use to talk about something that's not dry it's mm -hmm. more wet um because i don't like dessert where i have to drink water or milk at the same time to swallow it yeah um, either <laughs> my favorite recipe as well at the moment because I've learned to master it. I really have. Mm -hmm. Is carbonara. Oh, good. Yeah, that's a nice dish. I've learned to master it. Do you like? See, my thing with carbonara is okay. Um, the way that I like it, you probably wouldn't like it because. I have a thing about um, eggs that are not like super cooked. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, you like sometimes them more like scrambled. Okay, a little less than that <laughs> in my carbonara. Not scrambled eggs, but um, I don't like when there's a lot of, um, when it's very, very liquidy. <sighs> I know oh, some okay. of it is water, right? Like you add a bit of water to it, but yeah, I um, prefer. I'm going to send you a good recipe, actually, so so that I, because I could never get that recipe correct. I don't know why. Um, but this one, because of the heat of the pot, sort of allows the egg to attach itself to um, mm. 
the pasta, which and then it starts to get a little bit harder and it's not as liquidy. Mm -hmm. I'll send that to you. Maybe okay. maybe it works for you. Yeah, I should try it at least once. Carbonara, it's a staple, Italian staple food. <laughs> you can move up a little bit so that it isn't so liquidy, that it's more solid. And then mm. at least you, you have what you like. That's true. Yeah, of course. You can adapt these things. Definitely. So we're going to continue here. Uh, it says, in English, there are many expressions and colloquialisms relating to food. Would you like to read them? Yeah. Um, for example, the exam was a piece of cake. I'm 99% sure I aced it. Um, aced it means that I did really well. I did extremely well. Mm -hmm. To do extremely well in something. Um, no thanks. I don't think I'll come with you to the cinema. Romantic comedies aren't my cup of tea. <laughs> I just <laughs> Good. So, um, can you, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> can you think of any others that you've heard? So mm. what you want to do in the comment section is to let us know if any expressions or colloquialisms in general, food idioms, that you've heard in English um, and let us know in the comment section. Or maybe if you haven't really heard any in English, maybe you have some in your native language. So in Italian, French or Spanish, are there any uh, food idioms and can you perhaps translate it or explain it in English to us? Let us know. In the meantime, maybe we should try and um, explain to them mm. what the, what these these um, food idioms mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first one, a piece of cake, is something that is very easy. Yeah. Like riding a bicycle. Mm -hmm. I'm just joking when i was a child riding a bicycle was not a piece of cake for me right <laughs> and um, when you say my cup of tea we don't usually i don't know this is my opinion jenna maybe you disagree mm -hmm. i wouldn't use my cup of tea as a positive i generally mm -hmm. tend to use it as a negative mm -hmm. i generally say it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. It is. Exactly. I've never heard it in the positive form. So maybe mm -hmm. you could use it uh, in the positive, but generally speaking, I th think it's more natural when people say, not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And when we say something is not my cup of tea, you don't like something. There is something specific you, you're not interested in. Mm hmm something you don't like or are not interested in do you have something that is not your cup of tea um yeah foot, maybe football is not my cup of tea going to going to watch a football match um i'm just not yeah i'm not that interested in in uh, competitive sports I remember you told me, but you do like other sports. Yeah. Um, I, okay, so once I went to watch a basketball match in yeah. Virginia, uh, Imola versus I don't whoever. Know who they were versus. Um, and I was surprised at how much I enjoyed watching um, the basketball match because it's very quick. Um, so you're always engaged in the... Um, I've never watched a basketball match live, only mm -hmm. on television, but the moves, they are very fast. Mm -hmm. Also because I think of the rules, they're not allowed to hold the ball longer than a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Could that made it, I think. <laughs> can imagine. 
So yes, guys, let us know if uh, um, there are any food idioms that you know or any typical food idioms in your native language and perhaps translate it for us in English. Because I, I don't speak French and I understand a little bit of Spanish, not unlike Jenna here who can understand everything. <laughs> uh, just let us know in the comment section. Yeah. We um, speak German and Portuguese, maybe. I don't speak Portuguese, but I do speak German. But unfortunately, we have no German viewers for tonight, so I, I cannot, uh, unless there's someone random, but I wouldn't okay. know. <laughs> um, should we continue to the next slide? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. See if you can make the idiom. Can you guess how to make the idiom? For example, cup, tea. Okay, so we did look at one with cup and tea earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's going to give the answer for that one. Mm -hmm. It's not my cup of tea. So it's exactly what we said here. They're, they're also giving the negative. Mm -hmm. And we have cry and milk spill and beans apple and i and nut crack <laughs> so what we would like you guys to do in the comment section is use the two words given for each example to give us an english idiom of course it needs to be an english idiom that does already exist so not to make your own idiom but to give us the the real one mm -hmm. hmm i always do the second one i don't know i don't yeah. know about you because yeah i'm a little bit dramatic um and i'm sometimes over sensitive mm -hmm. um so this one i do a yeah. lot yeah i'm sh i i think i do too definitely Mm -hmm. I panic. Um, you plan soon. it? No, I panic. Oh. <laughs> I panic. I really panic. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I also panic. It's like I get panic. this okay. sort of overwhelming sense of anxiety, and then it happens. Um, so let us know, guys, what would the idiom be with the words cry and milk? cry and milk what idiom would you make from that should we give them an idea yeah i think these are quite difficult to guess well definitely difficult to guess if you don't know them already mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for cry milk we would say don't cry <laughs> over spilt milk so when something is spilt, it's like the coffee cup in the picture. Mm. All of the, the contents is on the floor or on the table, but not in the cup or the jar. Mm -hmm. Would you like to read what Andrea said? Yeah, a famous Italian idiom is fi <laughs> fish smell. Uh, okay, fish always smells from its head. Oh, I don't know that one. It means when something goes wrong, for example, at work, it's always your boss's fault. I like, I don't want to say I like that one, but it, it's very different. Yeah. So we don't, we don't have, um, we don't have that one. No, no. Don't know if it's it similar. It makes sense, don't you think? Sometimes it, it does. It would. So yes, the word cry milk as well is don't cry over spilled milk. And what this generally means is don't cry over a situation that has already happened. Mm. Okay. Or a situation that's maybe out of your control. Don't mm -hmm. cry about it. Like I said, I do this all the time. What about 
spool and beans. Yeah, this is another interesting one. I'd like to know where it comes from. So the expression here is spill the beans. To spill the beans. What does it mean, Jenna? Tell me your tell me the your secret. Tell me, or maybe it's not a secret, but give me some information on what's going on. Spill the beans. Exactly. Um to give a secret or information away. Mm -hmm. Um usually we have a friend that can't keep their mouth shut and they always spill the beans. Maybe your secret, it's a surprise birthday party. They just don't know how to keep quiet. So mm -hmm. they spill the beans. Mm -hmm. Do you spill the beans, Jenna? No, no, I'm good at keeping secrets. I don't spill beans. I love how you're like, no. No, I don't. That me sounds like it's insincere, but I don't. <laughs> As if you were taking offense to what I said. No, I don't do that, Joanna. <laughs> Next, we have apple and eye. Apple with eye. Yes, Andrea, perfect. Don't reveal a secret. Don't spill the beans. Perfect. Mm -hmm. But what about the next one? Apple eye. Yeah. I see? love this one. Yeah. But I don't so, understand why it's an apple. A lot of these idioms are mystery. <laughs> so what like their origins are. Pupil, the pupil of the eye or the heart of the eye. Why an apple? Yeah. Exactly. So the quest, the phrase is um, to be the apple of one's eye, to be the apple of somebody's eye. Mm -hmm. And what would it mean? And this means um, to be very dear to someone. Um, it means that you cherish someone, no? Or to perhaps be someone's favorite or be preferred. Favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I heard this this idiom, um, which typically it is to be the apple of somebody's eye, but I've heard it so many times to be the apple of her father's eye. Mm -hmm. um, and then it would always mean that you are your dad's favorite child, or are you the apple of your father's eye, Jenna? Uh, I probably am. <laughs> I, I can't tell my sister that, but I probably am. Are you the apple of your mother's eye too? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I just thought of another idiom, and I want to introduce that before we get to the next. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Hmm. So when we have this idiom, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, it's referring to a child and the family. Or, uh, for example, if your mother is a doctor and you decide to study uh, medicine to be a doctor, it would be the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because you are the same. You're exactly the same like your mother. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's used more in a negative context. Hmm. Do you agree? But yeah, yeah, definitely use more in negative contexts. Yeah. So for example, let's say one of your family members is a very rude person, and then you grow up and you're just as rude, they would say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Because right. your members are the same, like one of your fam family members. <laughs> Not a nice way to explain it, but yeah. No. What about nut and crack? Hmm. Nut and crack. To be a hard nut to crack. Mm hmm. To be a hard nut 
to crack. How would we explain to be a hard nut to crack? If a person is a hard nut to crack, they're someone that is very difficult to understand, maybe understand their motives. Exactly. Yeah. You, you don't understand the person in general. Mm -hmm. to be a, how would I even write that? To be a difficult person to understand. I'm a word. For a second, I was like, what? To understand. Are you a hard nut or a tough nut to crack? Um, I I hope not. I don't think so. <laughs> Asking from your point of view, I don't really think so either. Yeah. Do you know somebody who's a tough nut to crack? Um, every now and again, you I come across people that are, but try I try not to to think about it too much. <laughs> That's pretty wise. It's really wise. Not that too much. <laughs> so yes, here are all of the idioms that we have that we've just gone through with you guys. Hmm. So if you know any more, yes, please keep commenting as well. We are really interested to see because I think some of them are quite funny. Yeah, sometimes they're the same in English and sometimes they're completely mm. off and they're completely different. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to show you some idiomatic expressions in, a co in context. So what does it mean in context? We're going to show you this expressions in a situation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what we yeah. want you to do is to try and understand what the expressions mean. You yeah. want to start? Sure. So the first one, the little girl is the apple of her father's eye. Um, he's a bad egg, so you should avoid him if you can. Mm -hmm. He spends the whole day in front of the TV. He's a real couch potato. What's done is done. There is no use crying over spilt milk. She won't want to come to the cinema with us. Horror films aren't her cup of tea. Many people were egged on at the football match. Not with literal eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to make clear, yes. When I heard that for the first time, I was like, what, they threw eggs at them? I was like, I will never go to a football match. <laughs> yeah. So guys, in the comment section, please let us know what do you think the idioms mean for each sentence? Mm. So, of, yeah, no, you can go first, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna ask you, out of these expressions, do you have a favorite? Um, I don't, I'm gonna tell you I don't like uh many people were egged on mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't necessarily i've never really used it mm -hmm. um i think I, I i really like no use crying over spilt milk because mm -hmm. every now and then i need to tell myself don't cry over spilt milk joanna if the situation right. is finished so yeah i probably like number four mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what about you um, I like number three because I, I, I just picture an actual potato. On the couch. On the couch, yeah. Just hanging out. With like a big smile on his face. Yeah. <laughs> Is there one that you don't like? Um, mm, yeah, maybe the egged on just because it, you know, you think about the maybe what the literal meaning would be, and it doesn't really match with the actual expression. Just Definitely that one. I mean, it's not something you could guess um, the meaning yeah. of that. No, no, it's not the easiest one. Um, so we've done number one with you, actually. So I'm going to give the answer for number one. The little girl is the apple of her father's eye, which just means that the little girl is her father's 
favorite child. So it's the preferred child, or it could be the only child as well. Mm -hmm. um, how would we explain number two? Mm, yeah, so he's a bad egg, so you should avoid him if you can. Yeah, if someone is a bad egg, um, they're not someone you can trust, or um, they're just a bad person. Mm. What's the word I'm looking for? A bad example or influence? Mm -hmm. mm. I've never been a bad egg. I don't think so. I think I've been quite a, a good egg. <laughs> a good egg, yeah. Yeah, we don't tend to say that, do we? No. <laughs> if I think of it, I think I'm a good egg rather than a yeah. bad egg. Mm -hmm. My whole life, actually. I don't think I've really... Because I don't like to be in trouble. Yeah, no, me neither. Um, Jenna's also sort of answered number three. So mm -hmm. would, you, would you like to explain to them? Yeah, so a couch potato is a lazy person. But generally, I would say it's more for... Yeah, it's lazy, but somebody that just likes to spend all their time at home, you know? I use it more for that. I would use it for a person who is lazy, like they just like to sit and watch television. Mm -hmm. um, and they would rather let you do everything than help you. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. or someone who, who's avoiding maybe exercise. Yes, like that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's really potato that's really potato um so what's done is done there's no use crying over spilt milk we've also explained that one in the, um, the first slide so mm -hmm. here they're explaining the situation is finished or the story is finished um there is no point being upset or sad or even angry about it anymore mm. And number five, would you like to try and explain? Because we got to number five too. Yeah, um, so here it says horror films aren't her cup of, cup of tea. It means that um, they're not her thing. She, she has no interest in horror films or she really doesn't like horror films. And then we have the last one. Many people were egged on at the football match. I'm not even going to lie to you, but I have no idea how to even explain that. Okay, so when you're egged on, um, you're urged or encouraged to do something. Oh. Um, at the football match, maybe the fans cheering uh, helped egg on the, yeah, the players. Oh, yes, mix sense here so to be very encouraged um i don't like to be egged on i i promise you i'm not even lying i've never used it before <laughs> so um in the meantime guys we're going to continue into the next slide uh here again we oh i was not supposed to do that <laughs> Anyways, so here we have all of the idioms again and uh, explaining it sort of what we've explained or like we've explained it. Would you like to read them, Jenna? Sure. So, apple of his or her eye, someone who is special to somebody. A bad egg is a bad person. A couch potato is a very lazy person. To cry over spilt milk is to cry or complain about something that has already happened. That's probably not worth it. Mm -hmm. um, a cup of tea, something someone enjoys or does well. And to egg on, to urge someone on. Yeah, to encourage someone to do something. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> so we have question, or oh, slide seven. Um, who or what is the apple of your eye? Why? 
Hmm. Have you ever known a bad egg? Are you a couch potato? Is one of your friends? <laughs> Do you cry over spilt milk or just forget a problem once it has happened? Hmm. What isn't your cup of tea? Have you ever egged someone on unnecessarily? Hmm. So what we want you guys to do in the comment section below, perhaps answer the questions with us about your life. Uh, who is the apple of your eye, Jenna? Because there can be someone. Yeah, um, just but my family. So I your whole family, family is the apple of your eye. Yeah, they're all apples of, no, we don't never say that. <laughs> But that's very very sweet um i don't have any children so that would probably be <laughs> a substitute yeah I don't have any children either i have a nephew and a godson but no kids i have a big kid actually it's my boyfriend so he's like a, a big kid that he can be the apple of my eye <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that counts Mm -hmm. and, um, what about you guys let us know who yeah. or is the apple of your eye we're very interested to know yeah so beloved people in your life or a beloved person um have you ever known a bad egg of course a lot <laughs> yeah i'm from well, south africa oh okay <laughs> no, I'm joking, not all South Africans, but yes, uh, I've known a lot of bad eggs. Mm. Not now at the moment, but probably when mm. I was in school. Yeah, I tend to keep my distance from people that are bad eggs. So I tend to do that as well because I don't like to be in those type of situations. Uh, but when you are in class with them, you sort of have no choice but to see what they do. <laughs> that's true you can't like close your eyes to everything while you're sitting in the class no no fortunately look there fortunately we've got lots of lovely students no no i'm not talking about my school i'm talking about when i was in school when i was in oh, high school, at school. Okay. no 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 not at, my job. Our, at our school no there are there aren't any bad days. i feel like i'm going very red no i was talking about um when I was in high school, I they, I there were a lot of bad eggs. Mm. Um, yeah, no, no. <laughs> oh god. Okay, Jenna, are you a couch potato? Um, recently I've been feeling more that way because before um this lockdown, I would. I would do like dance classes twice a week and now I'm not doing any physical exercise at home. So I, I feel like a couch potato these days. I feel like a couch potato too. I wasn't doing dance classes, but I was walking a lot, which mm. I enjoy doing. Um, and now is very minimal activity mm. or exercise. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Quentin, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I just wanted to encourage um, our viewers to contribute in the comments section. Yeah, we want to hear from you, um, answer the questions. Joanna and I are just giving some examples. Mm -hmm. So, yes, let us know. We're really interested to interact with you guys and to know your life with the examples of idiomatic expressions. Um, mm -hmm. Do you cry over spilt milk or just forget about a problem once it happened? Oh, it depends. Um, yeah, it depends what the problem was. Um, mm. Yeah, I tend to lament things that <laughs> that had a negative influence um, on my life. But yeah, again, it depends what it is. <laughs> on my life, yeah, so, so do I. Um, I think if that the severity of a situation wasn't as big, I tend to forget about it. Mm. If something was a little bit more difficult or more of a negative situation, 
I tend to dwell on it for a longer period. Mm. Or I dwell on it for a little bit of time, but I will eventually dwell on it again in the future, which right. is something I need to, to work on for myself. I'm not perfect. Yeah, no, it takes time, this kind of thing. Uh, once again, what isn't your cup of tea? Hmm. Um, what is it my cup of tea? I'm trying to think of something different now. Um, cars? <gasps> you don't like cars? Like I'm not, I'm not fascinated by different kinds of cars. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of like typical, like masculine sort of hobbies are not my, tend not to be my cup of tea. <laughs> That's okay. I think I'm a little bit of the opposite because I like oh. competitive sports. I love cars. Hmm. Uh, oh. Yeah, I enjoy. I think it's pretty cool. Some of the things, because some of the things, like for men, it's like you don't get them for women, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. men, but some of them are really interesting too. <laughs> like, um, I'll give you an example. I when i buy clothes for my brother or my father or even my boyfriend it's so much easier for me to buy things for them hmm. than for them to buy for me it's like their stuff is perfect it's just there for me it's like this doesn't match this doesn't match so that's right something. yeah um what about you guys what isn't your cup of tea let us know an example something you don't like and the last one, have you have you ever egged someone on unnecessarily? Not that insistent. Um, if somebody doesn't want to be bothered about something, I probably won't persist. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, the last time. What about you, Joanna? <laughs> Have you ever egged someone on unnecessarily? Of course, it's in my nature. Yeah? Yeah. Um, um, for example, if somebody is angry at me for a reason, like maybe I don't know what the reason is or something, mm -hmm. uh, and then I always would be like, so tell me what's wrong, and I would mm -hmm. make them, I sort of, push to a point either where they get more angry or mm -hmm. they need to tell me. Um, I think another thing, it's not urge, but I encourage. Mm -hmm. uh, I generally like to encourage people and push people to do something that I think is going to be really, really good for them. Mm. I would never intentionally push somebody to do something bad or something that's going to end up negatively for them. I don't right. I don't do that intentionally. If I've ever done it before, sorry. <laughs> what about you? Um, yeah, yeah. If I've tried something um, and I really enjoyed it, and I think someone else could benefit from it too, then I, that's that's a situation in which I might egg someone on to do something. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And then it says. My mum is the apple of my eye because she's a yeah. very kind person. But she is also strong in bad situations as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so sweet. Uh, your mum yeah. is not to have a son like you, Andrea. You're very nice. It was a nice compliment you gave her. Um, so we are coming towards the end of our webinar. We have like 50 seconds left. What we do want to let you know is if you have any questions related to grammar at all, anything, mm -hmm. uh, not only grammar, English too, you're more than welcome to go to our My S S O S. It's our Facebook page and ask your question. We will try and help you as best as we can. Um, anything else you want to let them know in our remaining 20 seconds? Mm, yeah, try just try and use these expressions. Um, choose 
two or three that you particularly like and try and use them in conversation. It really um, helps you to sound more more fluent in the language, more natural. Mm -hmm, um, we, use them. we use a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I agree with Jenna. Do those. Do that. And uh, yeah, have fun with them. Some of them are quite funny when you learn them, when you understand them. So have a little bit of a laugh. And bon appetito, have a good dinner, guys. It's now nine or 10 to nine and have a wonderful evening. We will see you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.